Okay then, Joe, so in this video then, we're going to look at reinforcing the safe isolation process mm -hmm. for our students when they've been with us only a couple of weeks. So does that mean, Joe, we'll be getting out the voltage indicators, the proving units, and our GS38 test probes? Once again, this video is aimed at learners. As you've mentioned, it's aimed at early stage learners. So what we don't want to do is immediately have learners connecting to what could be potentially live parts if something's gone wrong with the safe isolation process. So what we're going to be demonstrating in this video is how we could possibly involve the use of a voltage indicator plug-in type yep. uh, in order to prove safe isolation. So plug-in voltage indicator, and I see mm -hmm. Joe, you've managed to find four in this electrical workshop, yep. four yep. different varieties, <laughs> all slightly different yep. from the point of view, some of them are audible. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we can hear, and we like those ones, however, if we just proved the point, but when it's on, we've got no problem. <laughs> we don't really want that playing through the whole video, so we'll uh, turn that off again, thank goodness. So what we like about those ones though, if you're working in maybe a domestic property or a small commercial industrial property, that actually yep. when you're standing at the actual fuse board, yep. consumer unit, distribution board, that you can tell that the circuit's been isolated maybe by hearing it go off. Yeah. For this demonstration, we're gonna use one of our plug-in voltage indicators that only have the lamps. And yep. we can instantly see a little bit of a change there between this one, which has three. Three lamps illuminated. And this one has two. Yes. But in both cases, it suggests that it's a good voltage indicator. Yep. So then, Joe, I think we're ready now to set up this mimicked isolation process. Yep. This is going to be different than the one that our students are going to do. It's on a separate rig, it's got a different scenario, so yep. we're just going to go through that process. So Joe, why have I been called into the installation first and foremost? So let's say we've received a uh, complaint from a customer, they're telling us that they've got a damaged socket, okay. and that damaged socket needs replacing. Okay, so there must be a thought process that we've got to go through, yes. a logical sequence. Yep. So let's think about the things that we're gonna to have to consider before we start changing that socket out there. Yep. First of all, where is it, Joe? <laughs> Absolutely, so we'd want to speak to uh, the property owner, the yep. property manager, the person who's looking after the place, and ask them for information. Yep. You know, We've been called out to deal with a broken socket, could you tell us where it is, please? If you imagine you went to a school, mm -hmm. it, the job sheet just says broken socket. You could spend half a day actually looking for the broken socket. You absolutely. might find a different broken absolutely. socket. <laughs> you might replace the socket you didn't mean to. Yeah, absolutely. So let's 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 talk and liaise with the people that are either property managers or yeah. in this case the owner of the installation yeah. and find out what we're there to do. Yeah. So and that is really the first stage of the process, yeah. isn't it? We want to identify the equipment that we're going to be working on. Okay. And have you identified the equipment, Joe? Do we I know have. what we're doing? Absolutely. I came and I spoke to you, Gary, <laughs> as the property owner. Uh, you can see here we've got a socket that's got a crack uh, across the fixing screw, so some heavy-handed learner has put that back with a little bit too much force, Okay. so we want to replace that. So we've identified the equipment that requires isolated. So yes. that's the, the first part of the process for us. There may be some other stages in there as well, Joe. Mm -hmm. Imagine we've gone to somewhere like a hospital mm -hmm. or somewhere with lots of I say, data equipment, yep. IT, yep. and we start going through the process. There might be a stage that slips in between there. What other stage might we now be looking at? We may need to uh, acquire a permit to work, yeah. which will allow us to isolate circuits. And when we do that, it, there's levels of protection built into that. There's procedures and processes that you have to go through. Some of them will be unique to the place that you're working in. Yep. Some of them might be quite generic, but there's two things to think about. Number one, we're about to start working on dangerous equipment. We're in we a are. dangerous situation. And also our actions could cause danger to others. So we might be isolating a circuit that we think is just feeding this one socket yep. and it turns off some vital equipment. So by acquiring that permit to work, it builds another level of safety into the process. And key there is there'll be some signatures required, maybe from our line manager yep. as the electrical team, and there'll be a signature required by the, the person within the installation to say the yep. following, that at this time, this action can be taken yep. place in order that the work can be carried out. So it might be that we turned up an installation, we've identified the outlet that needs replacing, mm -hmm. and the work can't start, yeah, because we're gonna need to put a permit to work in place. Yep. Okay then, Joe, I think we're now comfortable in this mimicked installation mm -hmm. that we've got enough information to start that safe isolation process. Yep. So I come down to the consumer unit. Yep. Okay, I open up the consumer unit. Yep. And now I'm faced with an array of overcurrent protection <laughs> devices, means of complete isolation, yep. RCCBs, mm -hmm. remote isolation. 
little bit more complicated now. Is there any yeah. other information that I could use that perhaps can help me identify the circuit? Absolutely, because again, if you just look at the labels on here, and we often find this with consumer units, unfortunately, especially ones that haven't been installed particularly well, you can see on this one we've got sockets, yeah. and then we've got sockets. Well, oh. which one are we going to isolate? We need a bit more detail, and we that's do. where the circuit chart comes in okay. helpful. So every consumer unit, every distribution board should have a schedule of circuits with it telling you uh, what way the circuit is on, yeah. the type of protective device, the rating, and also what it's feeding. And that one's quite basic here. Yeah. Often now in industry, it's actually almost a copy of the uh, schedule of test results. Yeah. And often it's actually stuck either mm. inside the lid or on the front of the yeah. consumer unit itself. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It might even give you readings that you've done when you've been carrying out a test as well, yeah. which is brilliant. We've got a, a more basic version yeah. here at College Joe. So yeah. we've got on laminated paper, we've got a breakdown of what we believe are the circuits. Yeah. But of course, we've got to take everything with a little bit of a pinch of salt. Yeah. So we've gone down from, and we're starting this side working through. Yeah. It's suggesting we go garage, and then we've got a radial socket circuit. Mm -hmm. Then we've got a lighting circuit. Yep. We've got a breaker here, but mm -hmm. this breaker has nothing in it, and okay. the box says NA. So that actually, that looks like a circuit may have been removed. removed. Yeah, okay. We've got a couple of spare ways, which makes logical sense. Mm -hmm. And then we've got um, next circuit down, we've got a cooker circuit. Yep. And again, there's a little picture there suggesting mm -hmm. that could be a cooker, might not yep. be, but it's suggesting it is. Followed by a ring final circuit. Yep. Okay, so we've got two socket circuits, Joe. Yep. One's a ring, one's a radial. Yep. On the chart as well, it said that the radial socket circuit had three points yes. and the ring final circuit has seven. Yep. This might be another conversation with the client. Absolutely, yeah. It's very likely that when you speak to maybe the property manager or the homeowner, they might give you some more key information. Yeah. They're the ones who likely know more about the installation than anyone. So that's something to bear in mind as a valuable source of information as well. So we're at a stage now where we're looking to isolate. There's, yep. there's other ways we could isolate, Joe. We could, we could turn off here. We've got a, a linked <laughs> main could. switch or a double pole switch in the towers itself, yep. which I believe if we isolate that would turn off the entire installation. Yep. I would imagine for anyone using the Wi-Fi, <laughs> maybe a little bit of a concern. <laughs> or indeed the lights, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we'll yeah. go with Wi-Fi. Yeah. And we've got the similar switch here, linked yep. main switch or double pole switch within the consumer unit. Again, yep. if I pulled that switch, we isolate the whole installation and mm -hmm. that might be acceptable. That might be the yep. best way forward. Mm -hmm. But we're going to ask our learners to identify the circuit and isolate only the one circuit, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll probably be between a couple of things here. Yeah, we spoke to the person within the property mm -hmm. and they're suggesting three sockets as the thing says are on a radial circuit and yep. the rest are on a ring final circuit. Yep. We've got a lot of sockets there, Joe. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to be perhaps hoping that we choose the right one, but remembering that there is a chance that we don't. Yeah, absolutely. And also there are pieces of equipment you can buy that can help you to identify the circuit as well. You can get uh, plug-in tracers yeah. that you can connect up to a circuit and then you scan with another device along the board and it will kind of alert you when you get to the correct yeah. breaker. So there's other options available to help with this identification process. But not this college. Not at this college, no. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> so. Discussing with the actual owner of the property, we're suggesting that these three socket outlets here, mm -hmm. these three points, yep. are actually fed from the 20 amp breaker yep. and a part of the radial circuit. Yep. And then we've got seven points here. Yep. Okay, is that seven? Yeah, we've got seven, seven yep. points here. And those are suggested to be on the ring final circuit, and that's gonna be fused at 32 amps. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for the socket circuit, we're looking for a 32 amp type B breaker, yep but we're still going to go in with a view that it could be the wrong breaker and everybody's been informed within the installation that the power may go off. Yeah, absolutely. So then, Joe, we're ready. Whack off the breaker. Let's change the socket. Let's get out of here. As always, I love your enthusiasm, Gaz, and of course, we want to get the job done, but we want to get the job done safely. Okay. So before we get involved in that process, we've got to make sure that our equipment that we're going to use to prove the circuit has been isolated is working properly. Okay, so we're going to use our plug-in voltage indicator. Yes. And what we're going to do with the plug-in voltage indicator is actually prove it on what we call a known supply. We're not going to prove it on the circuit we're looking to isolate, mm -hmm. we're going to use a different circuit. So it requires me to take this and yep. plug it into a circuit that is live and we know is live in order to prove it works. Yeah. I'll do that next. Let's do it. So I've come away from the test rig where me and Joe are working, the circuit that we're looking to safely isolate, and I've come to a known supply. In other words, a circuit other than the one we're looking to isolate that is live in order to prove my voltage indicator. So when I plug in this one, we should see two green lamps illuminate, and we've got the two green lamps there. And as I take it back out, 
we can confirm that this is working on a supply other than the one we're looking to isolate. So we can go back upstairs now and use it as part of our isolation process. Okay then guys, so you've been to our known source, yep. you've plugged that in, you've proven that our voltage indicator is operating correctly, agreed? Agreed. Fantastic. So what we're going to do now is plug it into our circuit while the circuit is still live, okay, okay to make sure that the circuit is on. So if you could do that for us now, please. There we go. So we're on the exact piece of equipment we're going to be working on. We've got it plugged in, we've got the two lights, so we know the circuit is now live. So what's the next stage, Guy? The next stage is we've actually walked out into the installation. This is where we've got to use our imagination to a certain yeah. degree because we're now going to be walking away and back to the consumer unit. So yeah. we're not going to know what's going on with this socket outlet when we're standing at the consumer unit. Yeah. We're going to select the appropriate overcurrent protection device, mm -hmm. even if it's wrong. We okay. won't know that because well, we won't know what's yeah. happening in the install and we haven't got the one with the noise going on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, So we're going to choose the, the breaker we believe is correct. Yep. We're going to disconnect the circuit supply to it. Mm -hmm. We're going to lock it off. We're going to put a sign on it, Joe. Yep. And then we're going to walk back into the installation. Yep. We've we got the wrong one. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Again, you can't be too careful when it comes to isolating from the supply. So then, Joe, we're at the consumer unit, and there's some special bits of kit that we're going to need at this end. And we yep. all like kit, don't we? In the electrical <laughs> industry, and show us what we're going to use. Yep. So the first device that we're going to be using is this locking device here. So we'll demonstrate exactly how this works in a moment. But this is the piece of equipment that is going to prevent the circuit breaker from being switched back on again. Fantastic. However, we want to take extra precautions because even though we've turned it off, someone might turn it back on. Even though we've installed this device to prevent it being re-energized, someone might remove that. So once we've got that installed, we then also need to make sure that we padlock our device to make sure that no one can come along and either maliciously or accidentally re-energize that circuit that you're working on. Is there any visual clues that we're actually making an isolation here, Joe, as well? Absolutely. So on the padlock, uh, it says here, danger locked out, do not remove. But we've also got to think about having some signage as well. So this here is a sign to indicate that the equipment has been deliberately turned off, it has been deliberately locked off because there is someone working on it and to re-energize this circuit would be extremely dangerous. And on the back side of here, you can actually see we've also got some information that we can add on there to say when the work is being done, who's doing it, and any other information that might be required. Thank you, Joe. So we've pulled the camera back, Joe, so we can see the next part of the process. Can you just talk us through what we're doing next? Absolutely. So we're going to fit our locking device. That's the next thing to do. So we believe that this uh, is the correct circuit. So we're going to isolate this circuit now. We're going to turn that off. We have no idea what's happened in the installation. So do we nip out now and have a look at the voltage indicator to prove that it's gone off? No, we don't. The reason for that, we might be quite a long way away from the consumer unit while we're away trying to check our voltage indicator, someone might go, oh, that circuit's tripped off again, as it always does, which might be the reason we're there, and come and re-energize this. So if we knock the circuit off, we isolate the circuit straight away. Okay, and we secure that isolation by the device that you're fitting next. Absolutely, so I'm gonna put my locking device in here. So there's loads of different variants of this available on the market. Uh, this one is a plunger type, and you'll notice it's got these little forks on the end of it, and there's actually little holes inside the circuit breaker that are designed to accommodate those. And when those are pushed in and the plunger is released, what happens is that uh, circuit breaker then cannot be re-energized. Those little metal bars are uh, preventing that from being turned back on again. So we're ready to rush out now into the electrical installations. And, oh, there's some more not stuff. Not quite yet, not quite yet. The next thing we need to do is to lock the device off. But before we lock that off, we'd like to just introduce this little bit of kit, the master lock here. Yeah. Now you'll notice uh, we've got here a sort of a, almost like a, pincer type action going on. And the reason that this is very useful is there might be several people who are working on this circuit at a time. It might be a requirement of the permit to work that more than one person has control over when that circuit's re-energized. Oh, I like that, Joe. So that goes on next. Yep, so we and put that onto there like that. And we've got the ability by looks things to have six people in control of the Absolutely, isolation process. Absolutely, yeah. So we could just put one padlock through here yep. and it can't be reopened. We could put up to six padlocks through here and it can't be reopened, which means that not only the people working on it, there might be two or three people working on a circuit, but also there might be a position for perhaps uh, a site manager, a uh, site supervisor to also have a device on there so that they're happy to re-energize when the circuit is safe. I like that. So we're probably now ready for our padlock and sign to go on next, is Absolutely, that right? Absolutely, yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to get our sign and we're gonna get our padlock. And what we're gonna do is first of all, open the padlock up with the key and you'll notice on this type of lock 
the key is retained inside there, which is really handy. I'm going to put my sign because this is the one that's relevant to me doing the work. I'm going to install that uh, onto the hasp there like that. And then I am going to place this through one of the holes there and lock that off in place. So now you can see we've got a process. The padlock is locking the master uh, lock there, which can't now be opened or removed, which means that that can't be taken out of there, which means the locking device can't be removed from the circuit breaker, which means that circuit breaker cannot be re-energized. Fantastic, Joe. So just pop the key now on top of the consumer unit and we can nip out into that installation and start the isolation. Well, of course, if we were to do that, there would be some serious risks associated with that. Someone could come along and undo the padlock and re-energize the circuit when you don't want them to. So the best thing to do is to keep that key on your person at all times. That key represents your safety in your life. So keep that on your person and make sure that uh, no one gets hold of that and re-energizes the circuit when you don't want them to. It's now a classic case of walking out into the insulation and seeing that our circuit has been isolated. If it hasn't, yep. what do we got to do? We've got to come back. We've got to re-energise this circuit after issuing relevant warnings. And then we've got to isolate what we think might be the right circuit again. Let's pop out into the install. Let's go. So ignoring how close our consumer unit is actually to where we yep. are, we've walked out into the installation. Yep. Whew, I've got there. My two green lamps are off. Yep. I'm ready now to change that socket, Joe. You're very, very close. And I know that you're dying to get this sorted out, but there's one more stage that we need to think about before we start working. Yes, the lights have gone off on the voltage indicator, but there is a possibility that our voltage indicator has failed while we've been away from it. Okay, so it was live. Yep. It's still live, but the electronic saying here is packed up. Absolutely, that's a possibility. I open up the socket outlet, I yep. plunge my hands in, yeah, and kill myself. Absolutely, yes. Okay. So what we need to do now is we need to make sure that that voltage indicator is still working by going back to the known source that we used before. Okay. Plugging that in and making sure that it's still working. So I'm off again. Off you go. Let's go and check this again. So we now believe our circuit is isolated from the supply. We've locked it off. We've included a sign. However, we're not quite ready yet to work on that circuit because our plug-in voltage indicator may have failed. So we come back to a known supply other than the one that we're working on. I've returned to the same socket outlet in order to prove that our voltage indicator is still working. Again, the two green lamps illuminate. I've reproved my plug-in voltage indicator, and for us, we're now ready to work on that socket circuit. All good, Joe. Fantastic. So, yep, checked it on the known supply. Yep. It is working, and we're ready to go. Yeah. That's the, now it's the chicken and egg thing, and it. Do we yep. plug it back in? Do we go again? Yeah. For us at college, is that enough? Yeah, I think so. We're at that stage. I always think of it as being a proving sandwich, you yep. know, that you've proved it's live. Uh, you've, you've proved the voltage indicator is working, yep. you've proved that the socket is dead, and then you've proved that the voltage indicator is working again, yep. and that's enough, I think. We, we could then plug it back in again yep. and check that the socket is still dead, but where do we stop? Yep. Okay, you know, so I think at this stage, we've done that sandwich, we're happy that the kit's working, we're happy that it's isolated. And remember, our learners have only been with us probably three weeks as we do this. Our electrical knowledge is, is quite limited. Yep. I can see you've got some other kit in your hand. Yep. There'll be a cry out there now that even though we've done that, that yep. maybe when we peel off the front itself that we yep. go on and, and prove again. Absolutely, and again, you've got to make sure that you're safe and that the people that you're working with are safe. That is your responsibility. This video is aimed purely at week two, three learners uh, of an electrical course. So we think that the risk is greater now for them to start yeah. poking around in the back of a yeah. socket with voltage yeah. indicator equipment like this. So we, won't be doing we that. think that this is the safest way of proving safe isolation for a very early stage electrical learner. Yeah, so I think we've gone through the process. I think it's that time, Joe. Yeah, shall we do it? Shall we do it? Let's do it. We, we hope, hope this video has been some help. help.